My name is Jeffrey Frankel and in this series of YouTube videos I will show you techniques and tips to reduce the time it takes to deal with questions in Paper 1 of the IB Chemistry exam at both standard level and higher level. This is one of those questions where the examiners are checking your understanding of collision theory an understanding that the rate of the chemical reaction will be increased by increasing the temperature, the rate of a chemical reaction will be increased by adding a catalyst, and the rate of a chemical reaction will be increased by increasing the concentration of the reactants. So all three are two. And although this question doesn't ask it, you must be able to explain it in terms of collision theory, that increasing the temperature increases the energy of the particles or the molecules, in the system and makes them move faster. Therefore, there are more collisions or a higher frequency of collisions. Adding a catalyst, you must understand that adding a catalyst reduces the energy of activation of the system, thus providing a different pathway or a different mechanism for the reaction to take place and does result in increasing the rate of the chemical reaction. Increasing the concentration of reactants simply means that they are closer together, the particles or the molecules are closer together in the system and therefore there's a greater opportunity for them to collide and for the reaction to take place. This is another question where, as you read it, you realise there's something wrong with B, increasing the activation energy. The activation energy is fixed for a reaction, and increasing it would actually be the opposite to increasing the rate of reaction. Generally, you don't increase the activation energy, you reduce the activation energy by means of a catalyst. B is the one that cannot increase the rate of a reaction. Increasing the temperature clearly does increase the rate of reaction. Increasing the concentration of reactants clearly does increase the rate of reaction. And increasing the surface area of the reactants increases the rate of reaction. But increasing the activation energy does not increase the rate of reaction, even if there were a way of doing it. This is another one where it shouldn't take you more than five or ten seconds to realize that the molecules do not have enough energy is the answer. A strange one, molecules do not collide in the proper ratio. That is a strange response. Concentration is too low is clearly irrelevant because it doesn't really matter what the concentration is. Uh, if the reactant molecules beat and collide, they will react independent of the concentration. Uh, the reaction is at equilibrium is totally wrong because, uh, as you know, with equilibrium reactions, the reaction doesn't stop. The reaction does continue. So the answer is the molecules do not have enough energy. And as I say, that shouldn't take more than five or 10 seconds to realize that. This is another question which may take you a little bit of time to read through all the words in the question. But at the end of the day, you'll come back to A. More molecules have energy equal to or greater than the activation energy. That is the answer to this question. In collision theory, you must know what effect reaction rate. You must know it's the state of the reactants. Yes, whether they're large particles or small particles or powder or liquid or gases. Yes, that does affect the rate of the reaction. You must know that. Frequency of the collisions between the particles. Yes, that must affect the rate of the reaction. That is part of collision theory. The average kinetic energy of the particles. Yes, that's true. As the average kinetic energy of the particles increases, that will affect the reaction rate. If you increase the average kinetic energy of particles, it will mean that more particles will have a kinetic energy greater than the activation energy. Therefore, all three of these affect the reaction rate. 
This is another question about your understanding of collision theory. How, how can you increase the rate of a reaction? Increasing the pressure? Yes. If you increase the pressure for gases, you are in effect increasing the concentration. So the molecules or particles of the gas are closer together and there's a greater opportunity for collision. There's a higher collision frequency. Increasing the temperature? Yes. That means that the particles have higher energy and therefore there will be more particles that will have uh, energy greater than the energy of activation. And in addition, they will actually be moving faster and therefore there's a greater increase in collision frequency. Removal of HCl? Irrelevant. It's important to remember that the rate of the reaction is dependent solely on reactants and is independent of products. Removal of HCl is irrelevant to the rate of reaction. So the answer to this one is only one and two. One and two, that means A. This is one of those silly questions where the examiner is just testing whether you really understand the state symbols. And obviously, a gas syringe could not possibly be used in this case because there is no gas evolved or even a re as a reactor. Everything is aqueous. This is one of those questions where just one word tells you the answer, and that one word is open. The reaction is carried out in an open flask, so it's impossible to actually measure the carbon dioxide produced. So three is wrong. If three is wrong, then the answer must be A. And let's just check. The mass of the flask and contents, yes, that's one way of doing it. The pH of the reaction mixture, yes, that's one way of doing it as well. So that one word, open flask, because to be able to do this by measuring the volume of carbon dioxide, you would have to have a closed system with possibly a gas syringe or something of that nature. So the word open shows you how to answer the question. In this question, the examiner is testing whether you understand the difference between a large piece of calcium carbonate and powdered calcium carbonate in terms of the reaction rates and the difference between one mole per decimeter cubed and two moles per decimeter cubed. And can you put that information together? What is the situation for the fastest? Obviously, it's got to be powdered calcium carbonate, so it's one of these. And also, it's got to be the strongest hydrochloric acid, so that must only be C. Powdered calcium carbonate and two moles per decimeter cubed of hydrochloric acid will produce the fastest rate. This question is very similar to the previous one. You're given pellet sizes, large and small, and you're given two different temperatures, 25 degrees centigrade and 50 degrees centigrade. And you ask, under what circumstances will the reaction occur fastest or most rapidly? So you know the pellet size has got to be small and the temperature's got to be high. And that brings you to D. Again, a question that shouldn't take you more than maybe 10 or 15 seconds. This is another question where you're expected to understand that certain things are directly related to reaction rates. The only one of these that is directly related to a reaction rate, and specifically a first-order reaction rate, is the concentration of the reaction. The size of the solid particles, clearly if you double the size, then the reaction rate would slow down. If you doubled the volume, then the reaction rate would slow down. If you doubled the activation energy, and as I've mentioned in the previous one, Changing the activation energy is a difficult thing to do because it's specific for a reaction and usually you reduce the activation energy with a catalyst and that increases the reaction rate. The only thing that fits in with this is 
concentration reaction A. If you found this YouTube video helpful, please say you like it and subscribe to my channel and look at my other YouTube videos. Thank you.